Okay guys, I'm just going to make a little small clip here about um, creating force reports. So you create your usual sort of um, drag and lift reports, you know, done previous video on creating these. Um, so we print the drag to the console like such, and the same with the lift. But there's another uh, sort of force report that's very important to produce. It tells us a whole lot about where um, the drag components are coming from. I usually call that drag part, so I'll show you it here and how you work it. So once your drag and lift is created, create a new force report. Um, so go for drag again, and this time call it drag parts, and select it as per usual. Now don't print to cancel, um, and select per zone. So what that does is when this report is being created, it's breaking down how each um, face contributes to the total drag coefficient. And it's very interesting, say you're comparing different configurations of this fan, um, it can tell you how your configurations are affecting certain parts of the vehicle. So really important, and I'll make a video on uh, post-processing um, the drag part files. So they're very, very important, okay. Okay guys, so we're gonna look at a tutorial here now at that drag parts um, report that we created in Fluent and how we post process it and how it's different to just say like the drag and lift report. So I'll open up the drag report here and the drag parts report and we look at the difference. Okay, so you can see there that the drag report just kind of records all the iteration per iteration what the, the drag coefficient is. And because this was a hybrid LES simulation, I think we ran for 1250 iterations was the RAN simulation. And then after that, then we switched to a transient solution. Um, so I'm just going to post process uh, the RAN's version here. Like you can, you can do the hybrid LES separately then. So there's loads of ways um, to do this. So the drag parts looks like this. It has each um, name selection on our vehicle. For example, the bonnet and the B wheels has its own sort of uh, drag coefficient. Um, contribution. So this we're going to show you how to post process this file. So you want to sl click select all there and then click copy and then paste it all in here. Now what you want to do then is go to data, text the columns, next, space, next, finish and it does that for you. Now what I usually do is I delete the first two there, there's no need for them, and now I want to get rid of these like uh, I delete that as well. So then there's this name. I, I just want to keep the bonnet book. I don't want the drag parts thing there. So you go control F, go to replace and type in the word drag parts and then replace it with nothing as it is there. And then click replace all and that's gone. There's also an annoying um, part of a bracket, a front part. So you just click replace all, it's gone. And then the closing part of the bracket, replace all. Okay, so things are a bit neater now. So what I do then is I just, as I said, want just the uh, the first like 12, 50 iterations to be considered here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click insert here. Now I wanna get an average here for, let's say um, from the 501st iteration. So that would be about B, you know, something like 503 maybe. And then that's the, the 1250 iteration. So that's probably like 12 B, uh, 1252 anything rough like that. So we see exactly, did I get it right? Scrolling down here, I have to maybe double click it. So you can see there, yeah, I got it from 501 onto the 1250. So that's perfect. So that's the kind of back end of the RAND simulation. So that then this is reporting an average for that. Lovely. So now just drag all of these over here and that does the average for all of them. Then type sum and then go equal sum. So this will give you a sort of mean drag coefficient for the whole vehicle. So we see it has a drag coefficient about 0 0.274. Now you wanna copy all this, it's very important that you copy it and then click uh, to paste it, but just paste the values like that and then you want to transpose this, so copy it again, and then transpose it now. Lovely. And um, one other thing as well too, when we're looking at um, drag coefficients, we like to look at drag counts, and a count 
is a it's 0 0.001 of the drag coefficient so um, what we do is we multiply these drag coefficients the parts of it by 1000 to get the drag counts so multiplied by 1000 and then you can see that that account the bonnet accounted for and you see the, the full coefficient comes to about 274 counts so over the bonnet, the bonnet only accounts for three counts, and that's because a certain portion of it will be producing drag, but there'll also be a lot of thrust over the bonnet. As the flow is moving very fast and accelerating over it, it'll, it'll have quite a low pressure. It'll have a bit of thrust. And um, you can see other things there. So this is why the drag parts is very interesting. You can see exactly where each contribution is coming from. So I'll post-process this a bit more. And um, so what you could do is you could maybe copy just those two columns there, and then paste them there. Okay, so then come over here and then go to home and then move this over here so that you only show one decimal place. You, you wouldn't want any more than one decimal place on the drag counts. And you can make a table of this then. You could order, uh, see which is the biggest contributor. So we can see quite interesting here, as you'd imagine, the front and the rear are responsible for the most drag. And then we're getting a bit of uh, drag recovery over the roof. Again, remember there might be a bit of trust over the first part of the roof. Um, and then the rest of it is just sort of flat, so there's not really a whole lot of frontal drag or rear drag from it. Um, and you can see sort of as well on the underside, interesting enough, so it must have a kind of an interesting effect there, um, where it's producing more trust um, than it is drag. Because um, remember the van that we worked on here was quite smooth, so this is that VW van um, that we were um, working through in a previous video. Okay, so other things you might be interested in here. Say you um, added something to the, the van. Say you added like a certain part, like a spoiler or a roof rack or something like that. Um, you could, as long as you have everything the same name here, you could have another drag parts file here and then you could compare to see exactly what um, contribution was added from um, the light bar or the roof rack, for example. And you can see how the other components of the drag parts here would have changed based on that. So I'd, I might show you a file in a second uh, where I'm comparing drag parts from two different simulations. So that's kind of the main thing here that you can see everything. And then you can also work out a percentage. So if you were to go take this um, here and divide it by 274.4, and then drag that all the way down there and then change it to a percentage you can see the percentage amount that that that's responsible um from each part there so it's a bit like a culminative um drag force over your vehicle but this is a little bit more precise at showing what's coming from each component rather than just along sections of the vehicle so you can see there the mirror on this van only counts for two percent in total drag um stuff like that so grant grant so I'll leave it to you. You can experiment more, but the drag parts is very interesting. You could also do a version of this as well for lift parts if you wanted to work out the, the sort of lift contributions on each component. Cool. Okay, so I said I I said I'd show um, what it's like when you're comparing, say, two two vehicles that are exactly the same but with something added. So I added a light bar to this vehicle and this is what the drag parts files look like. So you can see here how I've left two, uh, two spaces here on the original vehicle that didn't have the light bar to denote where the light bar goes and I compare everything else. So you can see here on the mirror you see the drag is roughly the same. Same. I'm putting a green through um, every part that has the same, uh, every name selection that has the same uh, drag contribution. And anything that doesn't have a difference, so say for example here, you see the front has about four counts of difference. And you see here I'm calculating the difference in drag count. So there's a four count difference there. And I can see here that there's clearly about 14 counts worth due to the light bar on its own. And also the roof is affected, as you'd imagine, because of the presence of the light bar. So we're seeing here there's an extra eight counts of drag because of the light bar. And say it's reducing the, the truss component over the roof. So you can gain a, a lot of information from looking at the drag parts for an individual vehicle and then if you go and make modifications to it looking at the drag parts compared between the two of them um, it's very interesting okay all right i'll leave it there